I'm Chuck Fast, and this is a bit of a departure from the event coverage that I normally do. Uh, the event here is me rebuilding my 4L60E for my Z28 in my driveway without specialized tools. Now, I'm not a tranny guy. I haven't rebuilt uh, a trance since the Turbo 400 I did. I put a B&M trance kit in uh, 30 some years ago. So. This uh, turns out this is part one of, of probably about a four-part series as this is a pretty involved process uh, working with these new electronic transmissions. However, it can be done and you'll see how. All right, here we go. The next driveway repair. My 95Z28 transmission went out. So I have pulled out the 4L60E electronic automatic transmission and there it is in the driveway. Oh and look at that now it's starting to rain. How nice. Well it's time for us to tear this down. So let's take a look at it so we can see where everything goes. All the wiring connectors. and we just keep pulling this thing apart further and further we're down inside the transmission now just pulled that little snap ring out so we could get the sun shell out of there and here is the setup and let's take a look at how the how that is right there that's how the uh, snap ring is positioned against that anti-clunk spring in there. Alright, I continue to tear down this transmission. I've been working on the inside of it. I'm down to this last servo piston at the end. This ring here was the worst getting this out. It goes, it holds this in here. I had to rig up my own little puller set up here to compress that so I could get that out of there. Now we have to tackle this. We need to get this out and get uh, two bolts out here before we can blow that piston out of the bottom of the case. Okay now I have removed the wiring harness which you have to get the uh, valve body off first before you can get this thing out. I'll set it aside over here with the valve body I set in the pan and I took out this servo so I can get the separator plates loose and the, this right here these three screws so now I should be able to get the plate out and here's a problem that the manual mentioned right right there that little ball is stuck in the steel plate so that had to have caused a problem so we're going to have to check into what that ball was and what that thing did so now we just take this off Fortunately, none of the gasket's stuck anywhere on this. There's the seventh ball right there. So now I have removed the bracket on this parking rod, which allows this parking ball to snap back. I should get out of my way so I can push this out of the inside of the trance, and that will take care of the inside of the transmission. I noticed how this piece of linkage here slipped right out of the manual valve when I lifted the body off from the case there. So I've just about got it down. Notice my mount, not much there. I gotta get this out, gotta get the servo out of the side, gotta get that out of the back and uh, be about ready to splash this thing. So there we have the empty case. The rest of the transmission came apart uh, just as the manual said. And I uh, used a little bit of the uh, xylol Xylene tire treatment that I used to clean it up and the driveway while I was at it. And we'll just blow this off and uh, it's Friday night. Okay, I'm working on my sub assembly now, taking this ring off right here, noticing how it's hooked right underneath that tab right there. Got it stuffed down into a wheel here. I'm going to pull these clutches out and count them. Okay, now here are the clutches and steels just as they came out of this when I had this upended in the wheel. So I've got uh, 
uh, six friction discs and five steels, thick steels on the bottom and the top. The bottom steel here had one friction up against it and then on the top also there's a friction and it goes to this which has which is the top one. The bottom one having uh, having these tangs right here. And there I see a steel ball laying right And here. this is the Torrington bearing that fell off of this when I had this turned upside down and the spacer watcher which has a number 67 on it. Torrington bearing seems good. And these are the five little cushioning uh, springs that came up from around the edges that came out when I took this out from under here. Next I'm going to take the next set of clutches out of there. Okay, next I'll be taking this next clutch pack out of here. I'm noting how, again, we have the uh, split ring comes together right underneath that tang, and I can see how it has shifted somewhat. I can see the little little marks where it has moved over just a little bit. Okay, as I pull the next clutch pack out, I'm beginning to see signs of wear now. Here's the thick steel that came off the top, just as it came out. Just as it came out of that, uh, okay, and I've got uh, uh, these uh, little diagonal lines in the uh, clutch surface. As I get down uh, toward the bottom of this clutch pack, I start seeing uh, evidence of some burning here, and uh, it seems to be more so as I get further down into them. Okay, now I get down here, I've got two steels together against the thick bottom steel and when I look on the other side of it it's looking pretty rough uh, that could be where the clearance was that I was feeling that's been scraping there it looks like all right uh, now this overrunning clutch here came out it has a little bit of looks a little bit burned around the edges there it seems to be working good turns clockwise smoothly and uh, doesn't feel rough or anything. I'm seeing something else down in here. Right down. Looks like a ceiling ring or something sticking out of the side right there. We'll take a look. Next we're going to have to get this apart. We'll have to see what I can rig up next. I may be running out of ingenuity to come up with clamps and things to get things apart because I have to get a uh, snap ring out of here and I can't go down through the middle like I did with my improvised tool. Alright, here we go. Just as they came out, I had four steels come out of here. Let's turn it over. They came out of there just like that. Concave steel on the top, which I remember hearing about in the manual. See, it's concave on the inside and these are pretty burned up. These are showing uh, lots of wear on them. And another concave is a flat and underneath that is another concave one. And it's starting to rain. And so here we have in here as I look closer look at that. That ceiling ring has come clean out so would like to know how that happened. Okay, we managed to get this out without the special hundred dollar clamp uh, with the help of a few cheap tools that I broke but uh, uh, all in all there's the, uh, there's the clip there unharmed dug around here didn't hurt anything any uh, just some screwdrivers and this little, uh, little gadget here I've used many times through the years this little uh, piece of welding rod bent up a little hook in the end of it helped me to pull that There we are. Okay. Hmm. That looks bad. Okay. Well, it smells bad too. I can smell it. Now, right here, it's looking like it uh, slipped out and shoved up against the side. Right there. So, the question is what made it come?